if you, I know some of you watching may not be in the flower world, which I wasn't either. And then I dove in and I'm like, this guy is a huge freaking <clears throat> deal. Okay. So I'm he, the Meryl Streep of flowers. Yes, he is. artist, entrepreneur, and the celebrity florist in Los Angeles, best known for his work as the artistic director of the Four Seasons Hotel in Beverly Hills and in Paris. He has a growing brand and staff with offices in both cities, and his award-winning floral installations, often compared to contemporary art, have landed him prestigious collaborations with international luxury brands such as Alexander McQueen, Swarovski Crystal, Givenchy, Burberry, Tiffany & Company, Samsung, and many more. He's also managed to become the go-to florist for celebrity clientele like Tina Turner, Oprah Winfrey, Madonna, and Celine Dion. He starred in his own TLC docuseries called Flowers Uncut, and he has appeared on the Oprah Winfrey, Martha Stewart, and Queen Latifah talk shows. He has designed two books, a collection of vases, a makeup collection, a collection of home decor items and fine fragrances. I was excited to talk with him about mastering creativity in business, making amazing detailed ideas become a reality, landing celebrity clientele, and much more. Thank you for joining me for another episode of The Pursuit. I'm Kelsey Humphreys here with Jeff Latham, yes. who is a like the florist to the stars, you guys. We are in the Four Seasons, LA, and this is like his domain back here with a million vases. We'll show, we'll take some behind the scenes footage. There's flowers everywhere. It smells like heaven. Yes. Thank you so much for You're letting welcome. me pick you. Thank you for having me. Yes. This is so exciting. We're excited. So what's so cool about your story is I feel like, especially with, I mean, I would call you an artist, a creator. A lot of times people assume that you started that in your infancy and you did it forever. Right. And then I was researching <laughs> your story and you worked in retail. You actually opened a Gap store here. Yeah, then you got into more. modeling. You went back and forth in modeling. And then at one point you were even a Starbucks barista, which of I feel course. like yes. gives everyone watching a little bit of hope yes. if you're, if that's it's you. True. And then you kind of just fell into this job because you were looking for work and they were like, they have an opening and you fell in love. Right? Literally right here where we're sitting is where so I started. Crazy. So it's just, I think it's just one of those situations and what everyone doesn't know is like behind the scenes, my parents are sitting over there because they're busy in here. Hey! So they're going to hear this whole story. <laughs> so I think it's just really because <clears throat> I've always, and my parents can attest to this, always kind of thought out of the box and wanted different things. You know, I, I as you know, I, I grew, I was born, I'm born and raised in Utah yep. and I always knew that I always wanted something better. Not, sorry, mom and dad, not that Utah's not a good <laughs> place because it is. Uh, but I always wanted to move to LA. I always wanted to, um, I was always fascinated with Hollywood and always fascinated and wanted to, you know, be an actor when I was a kid. And, and so I came out here with my best friend after high school, went to a year of university in Utah and then came out here to Los Angeles. Um, and that's when I started working for the gap. Um, and I loved that experience because um, I was a manager opening the gap on Melrose and the one in the Beverly center. As but, a teenager, <clears throat> mind you. Literally, I was, I think, one of the youngest uh, managers The Gap had um, for the company that time. I was literally started with them when I was 16 years old. Wow. And by the time I was 19, I was out here managing their stores for them um, when Mickey Drexler used to run the company. And I think it was for me, I love that whole idea of, even though people think it's, <clears throat> excuse me, kind of strange, there's a certain art to that. Mm -hmm. True. Opening a store, the organization, knowing how to run a team, knowing how to manage people, knowing how to put the same colored socks with the same colored t-shirt. Yep. And so it kind of started with that. But then when I was a kid, I was used to draw and I loved art and I always used to love artistic things. We decorated my bedroom and <laughs> not so much helping my father in the yard, but always trying to do things that really inspired me mm -hmm. as a child. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's why um, my parents did such a great job of instilling work values were always so important to me. So I've never been one of those kids that's like, oh, if I'm not doing what I want to do, then I'm just not going to do anything. I'm like, even today, 
if this doesn't work out, which I think it's gonna, <laughs> then uh, this whole flower thing, then I would have no problem working for the Gap or Starbucks again. I think it's just really important to keep busy, to keep your passion and keep a drive going in what you do. So um, worked, like you said, at the Gap, and then I started modeling. That's how someone approached me while I was working. And, and then I moved to Milan um, and Paris. And then when I came back after doing that for two and a half years, um, I had no job. Mm -hmm. And so I said to a friend, you know, do you know anyone who's hiring? And he goes, oh, yeah, I know there's a flower shop at the Four Seasons Hotel. He said, let me see if I can get you an interview. So I came in for an interview literally right where we're sitting right here 22 years ago. And was there was all these beautiful, talented women around me, and they literally helped me through this interview because the woman who owned the shop <laughs> named Paige, she said, okay, go in that cooler and get some flowers and, and work. And, and we just did it. And I was just kind of like, literally, I was 24 years old, and um, it was a new experience for me. And just learning every day was new. And I really feel like that too. You know, now either I'll learn something. I'm still learning from my employees, you know, they're great designers. Sometimes they'll teach me something with a technique, with a flower that they've learned before. You know, just because you're the boss doesn't mean like you're the boss of everything. Mm -hmm. In that way, I mean, you know, they're still teaching me. I'm still learning business-wise how to run my business. You know, my amazing assistant Emily teaches me things every day that make me a better money manager mm -hmm. or a better boss or managing people in general. So I look at life as like a big experience and not every day is amazing. Right. But most every day, you're, you're proud of yourself. Yeah, you know? I love that. When you started working with the flowers, did you have this aha moment, like, this is my calling? Or did you just continue to love it and never stopped? I think it was an aha moment when I knew that I was creating something that made people stop, look, think, and want to take a photograph of. Um, so, you know, I've always, like I mentioned before, I've always loved to draw and, and look at artistic things and go to museums and photography and such. But when I knew that you could create art out of flowers. That's what, when I came in here for the first time into the hotel for that first interview, I really looked around and I said, wow, they're creating art with flowers. I want to be a part of this. Mm. Um, so, and then it's funny, the evolution of everything that's happened in my career, how myself and my team, we've really revolutionized the way people think about flowers around the world. Um, it's a humbling kind of thought. For me. Yeah. If you, I know some of you watching may not be in the flower world, which I wasn't either. And then I dove in and I'm like, this guy is a huge freaking <clears throat> deal. Okay. So he, I'm the Meryl Streep of flowers. Yes, he is. So that's like the thing. But here, let's break down how that became. And I hope you all know what Meryl Streep, you know, I mean, three time Oscar winner. Come on. If they don't, I've been just stop. You know, that's the just thing. stop watching. So I know that's so crazy. So, but how did that progress? Because you were just learning in the flower shop and then you left. Coming up, don't miss his number one piece of advice for achieving success. But first, I want to remind you that if you love these celebrity interviews, there are three ways you can support this show, this free show here on the internet, you guys. First, you can like this video and share it with your hustler and dreamer friends. Second, you can subscribe to the channel. And lastly, you can sign up to join Pursuit Nation. When you do, I will give you my top 10 success hacks for real life. How do we take all the tactics in these interviews with millionaires and celebrities and actually apply them to pursuing our own dream? That's what I break down in this PDF. Get your free copy at thepursuit.tv slash top 10. So, but how did that progress? Because you were just learning in the flower shop and then you left and... So I was here for four years okay. um, and then I started my own business. I started um, working. So before I would come here to work at 10 in the morning, I would go have my uh, I would do restaurant flowers and I would do the Mondrian Hotel and Sunset um, and then I created my own business and I and I decided you know I wanted to do that more um, because I wanted to grow um, and be a businessman and earn more money um, and then someone walked through these doors these very doors and said you know I'm from Paris and we're reopening the George Sank and um, we need a flower someone who works with flowers and so I really wanted the job. And so I sent several emails. So anyone out there, be persistent and never give up. I sent several emails and we called and they actually sent an email back from Paris saying, so sorry, we would never hire an American to do something. We just wanted to see your work. <laughs> so I got turned down mm -hmm. and I was like, okay. And then I literally, you know, I was going through some paperwork about what events were in the hotel. 
and I saw that these people from Paris were coming back three weeks later. Um, so I said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. Because it's one thing about flowers is you can see like how pretty they are here, but what you're seeing there and what we're seeing here is two totally different experiences in person. So I made sure the hotel was just flawless and they walked in and saw the flowers in person and they said, can you be in Paris in two weeks? And so that's really how that whole kind of process started for me that you have those moments in life that something happens and if you kind of let it go on the journey that can change your whole life and that's what happened to me i was scared as hell believe me <laughs> i didn't know how to speak french i didn't know anyone in paris wow. um i didn't know what a big deal the george sink was which you know at the time and still is the best hotel in the world and that really put my name on the map in my artwork but so when that happened, were you like running this shop? Were you in charge or were you still just an employee? I was still just an employee, okay. still working for the woman Paige who ran this shop. And then she was, that's really like in the nineties, like when Vegas really started surging again. And, and so she decided to move her business to uh, Las Vegas okay. and I moved to Paris and then all this happened. So I've been in Paris now 17 years. Wow. So it's crazy. But you're based yeah. in LA now. So I'm, I'm still in Paris. So I still have a design office in Paris, okay. which I'll be at uh, next week. Oh, and then okay. I, and this, this is my main uh, hub here in Los Angeles for the United States. Gotcha. So you so, split. So split I split time. my time. So basically, the only time I get to relax is when I'm on an airplane. It's <laughs> honest to God. Like, I'll get on the plane. I'll get my glass of champagne. I'll take my Xanax. And I'm like, yes. boom. <laughs> I'm like, let's relax I now. understand for sure. In <laughs> fact, these trips for me, I was talking to my assistant. It's a little bit more like a vacation because I leave my toddler yeah. and all the dishes and laundry and all that at home. And so You're it's like, almost like work is yeah. the vacation. But uh, so now when I explain how it works, because they bring you on. You're the artistic director. Does that mean you're an employee? No. So uh, in Paris, um, I was an employee for the Four Seasons for probably 15 years actually okay. for corporate office and right. worked for the company um, because I had to for purposes, as you can imagine, for me to stay in the country yeah, 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 yeah. Um, for, for the legality reasons. Um, but then I really started to be a consultant for them two years ago. So um, I consult for them in Paris and then here, this is literally my own business here um, and they are my client and I'm under their roof. So yeah. Awesome. Okay. I want to talk to you about ideas and creativity first, mm -hmm. or, but first I want to do a couple more business things because you also have celebrity clientele that yeah. you got along the way. And I'm sure there are people watching like, you know, party planners, florists and photographers and videographers, and they all want the celebrity clients, whether in their area or actual celebrities like here. Yeah. What's your advice for landing those big clients? I think it's just keeping an open mind. Um, keeping, um, I know this sounds strange, but keeping an open in the beginning, uh, maybe pocketbook, because sometimes you have to give away some free things okay. to get that to happen. I know a lot of the times that I've done in Paris, work with celebrities or even here, you know, you want to send some things to them kind of as a note just to get their attention. Mm -hmm. And then as time goes on, maybe a little reminder, and then usually they'll start to call you and use you. So I think that that's really, really important is to just not look at it oh, this is a celebrity, I'm going to make big money. Mm -hmm. Because what you're doing is you're kind of using each other's services in a way. You're helping them with their service and, and vice versa um, because uh, that's probably the best way to look at it as more of a business expense. Mm -hmm. And then as time goes on, I mean, how many people have called me and said, oh my gosh, you've done the Clinton's wedding or Sofia Vergara or Eva Longoria or the Kardashians or this or that, and I've gotten business from that. Right. So you just have to look at it with an open business mind. Yeah, I love that's a great answer. And sometimes it's, almost, it's not all about making the money. Right, it's a because it'll come almost. in. After. Yeah, 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 I love that. So now you're a creative and you have these amazing ideas, but just having the great idea and the eye for it, I mean, you're having to logistically pull off sometimes like millions of moving pieces to make these masterpieces. So today was one of those days. Really. What's your advice from, I have this great idea. I can see it in my mind. How do you make it actually happen? I think it's for me, it's really not thinking about it too much. I think when you, I know for me and my, even in my personal life, when you get in your head too much, it just makes everything kind of a cluster of, of craziness. It's, I try to like, even if, if I have a job in October, then I'll start to think about it first part of September. Okay. Clearly the planning process is there and we get kind of the whole design idea. But um, I think when you plan too far ahead, 
then um, you kind of lose yourself in it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of I know for me, for example, like my best ideas come very last minute. I, I don't plan too far ahead. So I usually tell clients if you have like a big project, a wedding or an award show or something in your home, contact me like probably six months before just we can start the process. And you're also working with a team, yeah. which you post online and show pictures. Looks like you guys Nothing. have so much team fun. Team Latham, yes. Yes. But you're also giving your creative babies over to other people yeah. to make come to life. And that can be really hard. What's well, the trust. I'm guilty. Yeah. I'm, it's hard for me to give over like video projects and stuff. 100%. What's your advice on that? It's just really the most important thing is surround yourself with people that you trust. Mm -hmm. Surround yourself that people with people with no ego. Um, you yourself can't have an ego because you. once you um, really can say to yourself, I don't have to be there every time. And that's an ego based thing because a lot of times you want to be there and you want to touch yourself because it's my name and this. It's just like right now, for example, and I wouldn't have been like this two years ago. <laughs> I have like literally a team in Northern California and my team in Paris. And so there's all these little satellites of my business going on right now. And I'm not there, but I have people I trust. And it's just about keeping proper communication, um, sending photographs, making sure that you have an open mind to their design and know that they have your back, you know, mm -hmm. with design and with your business. So I think that that's really when I really decided to myself that I don't have to do everything myself. I can be the face of my brand, um, the name of my brand, but I don't always have to be there hundred percent of the time. That's when my business actually started to grow. Um, and it was wild. Because I was like, I always thought I had to be there all the time, right. but I don't have to be. I'm still making the money. Yeah, that's a good lesson. Now, speaking of brand and the name and the face, um, you have a giant Instagram following. And of course, I mean, you're known internationally and it is your name and it is yeah. your face. So do you have a strategy for social media? Are you still doing all of that yourself? I think that's, that's the most important thing. Like for me, as much as I wish that I sometimes didn't do my own Instagram because you can <laughs> get obsessed with it. Um, I think that's important that everyone sees your personality come out in it. Mm -hmm. You know, rather it be, you know, Colton and I planning our wedding or our engagement or just our everyday lives or us making this flower or saying where that bear comes from or people want to know. We live in a day and age where we're so obsessed, not so much with gossip, but we're obsessed with other people's lives. Yes. I know when I was a kid and my parents can attest to this, I was like so obsessed with like, celebrity and what's going on in Hollywood and what's <laughs> mm -hmm. happened in the design world. And now that I'm kind of involved in that world in a way, um, I just, I love it because it, you give people hope and you're inspiring people. I think that's the most important thing uh, with Instagram and Facebook um, and Snapchat is, is not looking at it as a burden more as a way that you're inspiring people. I think that that's, you know, every day I get messages for people on my photographs or things that I do that, you know, they might not have a million dollar budget, they maybe have a hundred dollar budget, but you're able to inspire them to want to achieve more mm -hmm. and to do better and to be a better person or to be a kinder person or to be a better designer. So I think that's, that's the power of social media. And I know for me, you know, there's been times when I've been like, I don't want to do this anymore, but I'll, I'll stay at home like for two hours and be late to come to the office because I want to find those right photos to post that give that good range of, of different, you don't want to, you know, have an Instagram that's just all the same. I want a little bit of my personal life, or right. a little bit of my work life. I want a design aspect. I want some things that inspire me and so that it's a, a big mix of everything. Yeah. And you mentioned you're kind of in this world now. There are some big personalities mm -hmm. in this world and just anyone watching <laughs> in the industry, brides in general oh, yeah. can be cray cray. The worst. Yeah. So yeah. what's your advice for, working with like big shall we call them clients or yeah and and big personalities high stress clients that are freaking out that sort of thing i think the it's just to really like gauge your clients when you first start working with them find out their personality are they warm are they open i'm the type of person where especially in the beginning with clients i just try to kill them with kindness mm. um not have any like even if you have a big name for yourself or even if you don't don't be pretentious and kind of walk in because there's a lot of people actually that work in my industry who are really not nice people and they mm. come with this pretentiousness of I've done this person's wedding or I've designed this and like who cares that was your past you're only as good as your last job mm. so you should go in and make I always 
my thing is make friends with the clients and it just makes it a better work experience in general. Um, I think, yeah, I think that's the most important thing. And I think for brides in general, going back to brides and people planning parties, as, as important as Instagram is and social media, don't get obsessed with it about your event because then you'll never make up your own mind. You know, mm-hmm. even right now, me planning my own wedding, um, I'm looking at Instagram sometimes and I'm like, if I get inspired like every day, I'm never going to make up my mind. You yeah. need to plan. And I think brides sometimes just need to close their eyes and be like, okay, this is what I want my dream wedding to look like and just kind of go from there. Or they'll never make up your mind and your florist and wedding planner will kill you. Yeah. Which, by the way, <laughs> is good advice as well for the online influencer world. Yeah. Like the per- person who wants to be you and is obsessed with yes. you and is always following you. You're not creating your own brand and your own vision that way, which is something I'm learning because I sit and I get obsessed with my guests. Yeah, no, but you. <laughs> and I dive in and then I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, I need to be Kelsey. <laughs> but that's the thing is you have to be yourself. Mm-hmm. And, for, and if anyone, you know, someone asked me a couple weeks ago, What's the best advice you could give to someone who's starting their business? And I say, be yourself. You know, you can take ideas from other people, but have your own style, have your own personality, have your own way of doing business. If your personality is on your business and in what you design or do or when you're interviewed, then people will always remember you. Mm. You know, if you're mimicking something else, then you're just one of the other pack. Yes. You know? Exactly. Be an individual. Yes. Now, looking back over your incredible career, what's been the worst part and the best part? <laughs> um, the best part, the best part is just kind of what what's happening in the future. It's just like I go back in my office and I see everything that's happening in my future, um, and a lot of it, you know, is obviously floral inspired. You know, I have a line of perfumes coming out. We have a new book coming out. We have a. a, a store coming out like there's just so much in the pipeline that all has to do with this but is not exactly a flower right um and i think it's just always business-wise keeping it an open mind branding yourself is really important you know creating your name or your business as a brand and so that other brands hire you like we're working on some projects right now with big brands where they just want my brand to collaborate with them and so that we can chit chat and it's all about collaboration too i think that that's where we're going like the last year and a half and so much in the future is it's it's not about me 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 anymore it's about who can i work with so that we can create bigger and better things together Mm, awesome i love it well that was a great note to end on we'll be right back after this with fast facts boom wasn't jeff latham so fun from our conversation here are my top eight lessons for success for the rest of us, for entrepreneurs that consider themselves artists or creatives. Number one, look for the common thread in your career. Many designers, creators, writers, and the like have trouble focusing on one career path. Latham never thought he'd be a florist. He just followed his passion for design and creativity. Think back through what you've loved doing even as a child and then in all of the jobs you've had throughout your career and find a common thread that you can pursue. Latham's was design and he says the key to finding work you love is having an open mind and seeing where your passion and creativity will take you. Number two, be willing to work. I love that he said that even if flowers didn't work out, that he would go back to working at The Gap or Starbucks. And remember, all of the people I interview have a crazy work ethic, you guys, not just working smart, but also working hard and loving the work itself. Number three, always keep learning. Another common piece of advice from my guests. They love learning whether that's through reading, through studying the marketplace, or through staying current in one's craft. Lethem says he learns a little bit every day from his employees, from his fellow designers, from his assistant. He says, look at life as one big experience. Number four, create your big break. I love that initially Latham was turned down for his Four Seasons Paris job, but then he heard that the executives were coming to the Los Angeles location and he went all out because he knew it would be different in person. And sure enough, they wanted him on the job two weeks later. So even if you get rejected, work to find a way to create your own big opportunities. Number five, be generous with influencers. He was actually doing influencer marketing before influencer marketing was a thing. He says keep an open mind and an open pocketbook at the beginning because that relationship will pay off later. And I hope you heard that he would send them free things and reminders and little notes and gifts more than once, you guys. So if you really want to connect with influencers, get some celebrity clients, stick with it. Number six, 
don't overthink creative work. He tells brides, don't even come to me until six months before, and even then, he often doesn't start until a month before the job. And the important thing is to give yourself breathing room, let yourself be creative, but make sure you communicate that with your clients up front. Number seven, be willing to let go of control. Obviously, it takes a large team to pull off his giant installations. And remember, he says, you cannot have an ego and you need to surround yourself with people who do not have egos and you have to be able to trust them completely. He says it's important to communicate well, make sure they understand what your vision is and then let them make that vision come to life. And lastly, number eight, remember, you are your brand. As much as you trust your team, it's still your name on the door. So I asked him, how did he build such a glowing reputation in such competitive cities and build such a strong personal brand and he says the key is to be yourself you have to have your own style you have to have your own personality or else you will not be remembered obviously part of that today means being active on social media he has over 600,000 followers on his Instagram account and yes he says that sometimes can be time-consuming but he says the most important thing is not to look at it as a burden but more of as a way to inspire people so think about that when it comes to using social media to build your personal brand. Now I'd love to know what was your favorite lesson from this interview? Leave a comment and if you wanna learn the juicy behind the scenes details like what was he like in person, how did I land this interview, see bloopers and more, go to thepursuit.tv slash Jeff Latham. We are back with Fast Facts. Yes. You ready? Okay. okay, I like these games. Chocolate or vanilla? Vanilla. Scrabble or charades? Charades. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Early bird or night owl? Uh, night owl for sure. Winter or summer? Winter. Wine or beer? Wine. No, Wine. beer. <laughs> I like both. Anything with alcohol, I love it. <laughs> yes, the answer is yes. <laughs> Pancakes or waffles? Pancakes. Guilty pleasure TV show? Oh, God. Um, <laughs> uh, anything on Netflix? Well, there's so much. It has uh, to be something you Weird enough, little... CNN. Okay, that'll yeah. take that. Yeah. Um, what's the wallpaper on your phone? Oh, it's, it's Colton, my love. Because I, I want to look at something that makes me smile. Congratulations, by the way, Thank on your you. engagement. What's the last thing you remember Googling? Oh my God, I Googled my friend Melanie Griffiths today because I was like, this is today her birthday. So I oh. Googled Melanie. Happy birthday, Melanie. <laughs> Happy birthday. This will come out later, but <laughs> yeah. she'll still like it. Uh, favorite book of all time? Uh, it's Kill a Mockingbird. What, uh, who's the last person that called or texted you? Uh, Colton. Last vacation you took? Uh, I was in Utah last weekend. Hobby? Uh, not my hobby. Oh, collecting art. Ooh, favorite snack? Um, uh, chips and guacamole. That's a common answer because yes. it's so good. And this new thing, queso, I'm like, who wants to dip that in extra cheese? Yes. <laughs> queso up. is not new. Did you like abstain from it's queso? It's new for you? us. Wow. I've never heard of that before. This wow. is a true well, fact. In Oklahoma, I didn't know there was a thing called queso, but now I do. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. Um, favorite music right now? Um, oh, I like this new Shania Twain that's coming out. Really? Yeah, I it's really, really it. good. I, I love my Shania. She has two new songs that just came out. Okay. Biggest pet peeve? Uh, people I can't trust. What would Colton say is his biggest pet peeve that you do? Um, I'm always, oh, what am I always saying? Oh, I'm, you know, I'm just that kind of guy. I'm like, I want more affection. I don't know. Um, and he gives me so much. I know, I'm just a true it. sap. I get it. Um, okay, what were you doing right before this interview? Um, what was I doing right before this interview? I was doing a flower arrangement. <laughs> but, but besides that, um, I was I, I was sitting on a proposal for something we're doing. It always has to do with work. Yeah. And finding out how you're gonna deal with your stress of the day. What are you doing right after this? I'm gonna go shopping. Oh, fun. Much yeah. more fun than to buy my employee a gift to say thank you for your hard work. Because yeah. that's what you have to do. <laughs> Don't be greedy, everyone. The okay. only reason you have money is because you have these amazing people around you that help you make money. So you have to share the wealth. Boom. Love it. Love it's it. It's true though. Last question. What is your next pursuit? What's next for you? Uh, just to, you know, build my brand in the next couple of years and so that it can kind of run itself and I don't have to work as much. Mm -hmm. 
Good answer. Good answer. Well, this has been awesome. So many great bits of advice for creative entrepreneurs and especially anyone in the events industry. So thank you. This is awesome. Yeah. I'm Kelsey Humphreys here with Jeff Latham, and this has been The Pursuit.